My name is Philip. I am from Austria, from Lower Austria, um, close to Vienna. And I studied in my bachelor's program already at uh, Vienna University of Economics and then decided to, to start the SIMC program. And uh, yeah, I was really glad that I got accepted. Uh, it's a bit of a tough process to get in, but uh, definitely paid off. SIMC stands for Strategy, Innovation and Management Control. And I was especially interested in the strategy and innovation parts, to be honest, because I was really into the classes in my bachelor already that dealt with strategy and innovation. And I was already in school pretty interested in entrepreneurship. So for me, it was kind of the perfect uh, master program here at our university. So it was also the only program I applied for. It was really my only option. The admission process, if you're here at VU and you know that SIMC is one of the most popular um, master programs here and one of the ones that most people are interested in. So there's just a lot of competition uh, basically to for, for getting into the program. And especially for me, I was quite nervous because I didn't have a plan B at the time. I really wanted to have to, to get into this program and none other. Uh, so that was why I was quite nervous. Um, we are currently changing up the admission process a little bit. Before it was uh, all in person, now it's, it's all digital due to COVID. And uh, now the admission process works like together with an online platform where instead of having um, interviews where you're getting ask all of those personal questions like to to get a feel of who you are and whether you are uh, the right fit for the master uh, you're going to do this all online via video answers and then this is getting analyzed and then in the last step you're also collaborating with other people uh, also online via, via zoom uh, who will then interact with you on a kind of live case study so that's then the last step before you get admitted and um, to qualify for all of this, you have to stay the same to, to send an admission uh, letter, like what is your motivation and so on. But I guess that's uh, pretty standard for, for all kinds of master programs. The admission process is, is kind of already part of the program. Uh, and and it, they really do a great job of assembling a cohort of people who are at the same time quite like-minded, but on the other hand, come from completely different uh, fields of interest. So I have colleagues who are like into video editing, for example, or into something really creative, are musicians or something like this, but also interested in entrepreneurship and uh, maybe want to do consulting, but also those, those people who like programming or something in a completely different field. So you meet all kinds of people and the cohort is really, really great. In my bachelor also, I often had the feeling, like in many of the strategy courses, for example, that you learn a lot, like how you analyze something uh, on a qualitative level. But if you get a huge um, file with lots and lots of data, like 20, 30,000 um, cells of Excel or something like that, I, I wouldn't have known how to start to analyze this and to do some number crunching on this. And but. I guess that's how it's done then in the real world. So I think it's great that you you have some courses in the program where um, you, you're given the opportunity to work with real life data and um, dive into the data from a real company and draw your conclusions. And then experts from uh, their field, um, we're, we're working with consulting companies here and audit firms um, are telling you what they found out with the same set of data. So that was a really great experience for me and, and a lot different than, than whatever I experienced in my bachelor's. Personally, I hope to be able to start my own business afterwards. Uh, of course, now because of COVID, etc., 
Uh, I'm not so sure whether I'm, I'm going to, to dive into it right after my master's or maybe it's better to get some experience in a company and uh, get some contacts especially and then try to, to get self-employed. But that's kind of the, the first track that many of us are interested in uh, to start their own thing. But another really big part is people who want to go into consulting or investment banking. And I think for those uh, tracks, we're also really well prepared. You, you have lots of classes that deal with all the frameworks you need. You also get, as I said before, some of the important quantitative skills. <clears throat> so you're not just able to talk, you're also able to, to execute kind of on, on what you're talking about. What is currently being looked for is a mix of um, like the quantitative skills and analytical skills to, to be able to analyze things and then also to present your analytics really well so people can easily understand what you found out. Like going from, from analytics that can be quite dry and can be quite um yeah difficult to comprehend for different stakeholders to get to something that's understandable for those different different stakeholders i think that's the communication is is key here so people understand what's the problem and how we're going to approach it and what are going to be the next steps so no matter if you're working for a big corporate or a startup you have to be able to present and sell your ideas or present and sell your analytics and I think um, our master's program is, is enabling us to do both the analytics and the presenting of this kind of analytics that you do. I would like to begin with all of the fundamentals uh, courses combined, like that's your, your first semester that you're going to be here. And it's really preparing you for all of the other classes. And at first I thought, when I, when I saw the syllabus, okay, this is the fundamentals course of this and this, and then there is the a little bit deeper one, but it's going to be mostly the same. Um, but now that I'm, I'm, I'm getting more into the, the courses further down the line, I really have to say uh, I'm being surprised again and again, like how, how much of a deep dive you can take in each of these areas and also how well they work together. Like that you're able to, to combine, for example, the management control class, which I was really impressed with in the, in, the, in the first year, with your finance classes that you have in the first and the second year as well. Uh, and then of course, you're also able to, to kind of um, mix and match your, the courses the way you like. So, according to your interest. If you're not so interested in finance, you don't have to put a heavy emphasis on this. You can put your emphasis, for example, more on management control or innovation. Um, it's really up to you what you want to learn about. Another really interesting course uh, in our masters was the business planning course, which was in cooperation. It's always in cooperation with some firms who give us real data to analyze. And at least for me, that was like completely new ground. And um, if, 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 if I would have been in the work environment and had to deal with this for the very first time, I would have been super nervous. But like in this environment in class, it was great because you were able to ask a lot of questions and really learn it step by step, how you can do this number crunching. So that was also a really great course. Of course, the fundamentals of uh, entrepreneurship and innovation was very interesting to me. However, I'm really looking forward to the, uh, business, plan, uh, the business project course in my fourth semester because uh, there we're going to start basically our own startup from scratch. And over the course of a semester, we're going to develop this idea and then hopefully yeah, follow through with it. For me, personally, I think it was leadership because I took the role as a head of an event series that is like focused on fostering entrepreneurship in, in, in Europe. 
It's called Entrepreneurship Avenue. And together with a, a second fellow from SIMC, uh, we led a team of around 20 people and we led them basically as an event company, so to say, through the coronavirus crisis. So it was a really challenging time for me. But uh, on the other hand, it really taught me a lot about interacting with my with my um, with my colleagues and motivating them even though the plans got changed over and over again until we reached our final like way we did it in the end uh, and had a successful event um, I'm really proud of it but without simc I, I wouldn't have been able to, to do that. I would say another asset of the master is definitely the great campus and the campus is situated in a really great city, which is Vienna. And uh, if you've never been at VU, I would really encourage you to, to, to Google the campus because it's really stunning. It's around like five, six years old. Uh, it's been designed by world-class architects and uh, it's really a, an experience to be there. Uh, for me, it's currently because of Corona really a shame that I can't be on campus because I, I love spending time there. And uh, also the city of Vienna is a very livable city, uh, ranking on the top of the most livable cities in the world pretty regularly. Not too expensive also uh, for students and has some, some great student life for going out and so on. So uh, you will definitely not get bored here. That's really like a really great part about our master's program that mm -hmm. the community is so close all the time. And it's not at all that it is, as you would maybe imagine, like from a top uh, master's program, the people are very competitive. They are ambitious, but they're not like competitive against each other. It's very collaborative and people are trying to help each other. And that's what, what's really so great about it.